Okay, hello, hello. So, <clears throat> I think it's around time. Um, this is 10 p.m. Japan time, so I would like to start this week's uh, Houdini Alg Algorithmic Live tutorial. <clears throat> okay, and the topic for today is to create a, a wind sculpture called Strand Beast, designed by a Theo Janssen, <clears throat> um, which he created this mechanism, link mechanism, uh, to create a simple structures, but creating like a working machine like these by just, by only just by rotating this center <clears throat> rod here. And by doing it, all the other uh, rods are <clears throat> going to move along with it to create this kind of complex working mechanisms. Okay, and I am going to show you how you can do this uh, using a new features from Houdini 18.5 called KinFX, which enables you to create a pr procedural rigging system. And I found that I found out that uh, using by using this KinFX rigging system, you can procedurally create this kind of a link mechanism <coughs> procedurally, and by <coughs> specifically by using a combination of FK and IK, the forward kinematics and inverse kinematics procedure, combining together to create this. Uh, looks like a complex system <clears throat> but in fact this is not that hard to do and by with these uh, setup you can procedurally change all those like movement and the ratio for the length of those parts like these could create kind of interesting <clears throat> um, output um, basically I'm just creating the one of the layer of the strand beast and using the same like process over and over again using for each loop for the other layers but just shifting the angle a little bit and what it uh, what it does here is that I'm I am just rotating this center rod right here that you see right here and by just rotating this rod, I am <clears throat> forcing all the other parts to be uh, moving like these by using uh, this KinFX system, the rigging system, using IK and FK. Uh, <clears throat> previously, I tried using, I tried creating this strand beast uh, in other way by using all the rotations uh, functions using trigonometry like sine and sine. And it did work well, but um, you do need to you do need it to calculate a lot of <clears throat> like transformations for each of the part. But with this um, setup, by using a KinFX rigging system, I think it can be um, <clears throat> used for any other like linking system. You can. You, if you come up with other linking system, you can easily implement that using the same like setup that I'm going to show you today. So you don't really need to think about how the rotation goes for the next link, linked mechanisms and so on. Okay, so I think it will be interesting. So let's do this from scratch. Right. Hello, everybody. So let's let's first look at some of the images of Strand Beast, how the mechanisms mechanism look like. Um, I think it's a good idea to look at some of the video for its mechanism, how the mechanism works. So let's see if there's a suitable video to see how it moves 
think it's better to look at 2D version. Okay, so here are some videos that could be used for in order to see how one leg moves. This one shows... Yeah, this is probably what I need to know. Showing how the leg is moving. Okay, so if you go from the start, you can see that what it's doing here is that it is... First of all, you have this gray rod which is fixed which doesn't really move okay and you can see that this rod the yellow rod here is rotating along this point this pivot point okay and by rotating this rod it is controlling the point position of this rod here and this rod here okay and if you trace this rod here, it is connected to this triangle, which its shape it doesn't really change as its triangle. You can see that the triangle shape preserve as it is. Okay. So, and if you look at the bottom part by look, following the tracing the uh, link from this point, from this rotating rod tip point, to this point right here you can see that it is connected to the other triangle which is also fixed as a shape like this which is treated as a tip of the leg this triangle okay so and what I can see here is that you, by rotating this rod here, it is then moving this tip point and also it is changing the angle of this rod which the length of the rod never changes for anything. So <clears throat> what I can see from this one is that you have two, um, in, uh, two IK <coughs> rig one is the uh, one is the top part which connects from this point to this point right here and if you treat it as a ik you can s you can think as this point as a root of the ik and then this this point or this point could be the middle point of the ik which shows the direction how the the joint moves then you can treat this point I mean this point right here as a the tip point which you can use to control uh, the point positions in this case it is moved by rotating this rod okay and so you have three points one two three points to create a in inverse kinematics to by using inverse kinematics by just rotating this tip point you'll be able to estimate this rod positions if you have decided the length of the uh, curve or this line now after you have this line um, estimated then you'll be able to get this triangle as well because this triangle never changes as its shape so by having this length you'll be able to get this triangle and if you look at the bottom part, uh, let's look at somewhere around here. So if you look at the bottom part, looking from this point to this point and to right here. Maybe it's if I should go somewhere around here. Okay, so if you look at the bottom part, you can see the other uh, inverse kinematics um, <coughs> joint, which is from this point, this point, and this point. And same as the top part, the, this point can be a root of the IK. This could be a middle point, and this could be the tip point, which moves around to estimate the, these rods' positions, uh, the angle of this position, <coughs> or the position of this point. So by having this point position, <coughs> you are left out with 
these part and this triangle. Now in order to estimate these part you can have additional IK combining by combining the IK on the top part and IK on the bottom part. Now by uh, using two IK you'll be, you'll be able to estimate this part at this point. Now after you have estimated this positions, <coughs> these shapes, um, you can create another IK by combining these point, the, these two point like these, like this um, three points. So having one point here as a root, having another point here, somewhere around here to the middle point and somewhere a uh, third point somewhere around here, tip point which connects with the bottom uh, part. Okay, so it's more like linking the IK to the another IK. <clears throat> okay, and after you have estimated that positions, you'll be able to estimate this <clears throat> uh, shape because it is this triangle is fixed and it is fixed based on this uh, edge. So once you have this edge, you'll be able to create this triangle uh, precisely or just um, like a geometrical calculations because it is uh, always aligning to this length. So that's the rule here. And by, understand this, by understanding this uh, rule, you'll be able to um, <coughs> calculate, you'll be able to easily estimate or simulate this linking system. Uh, let me check something seems to be wrong with the streaming is anybody is anybody having problem with the streaming i think it should be okay okay so let's try to create this system uh, in houdini using kinfx okay so let's see I'm going to start by creating a empty geometry node and first of all I'm going to create uh, a fixed bar so let me try to draw one leg as a diagram I mean I'm gonna make this comes to right here and let me draw some sketch the steps that I am going to create. <clears throat> okay, so what I am going to do, uh, first of all, I'm going to create a initial positions of the um, <clears throat> this strand beast leg. So let's see where it will be the desirable positions. Where does, where could that be a desirable positions? So let me see. So first of all, I have said that you have this fixed <coughs> rod right here. Looks like an L. Okay, and then let's make it blue. And the first uh, things you want to set is the rotation rod as and angled initially at some degrees okay. so I'm gonna create this rod first initially and you can decide the angle and the length which will change how the legs moves uh, later on okay now after you have decided that you want to create two linking um, system I mean two IKs one is gonna look like this and use this point as a root this as a middle and this as a tip okay and another <coughs> IK which is connecting somewhere around here it's connecting to the same tip point ah oh, wait a minute I made it wrong let me undo this. The po this point should connect to this point, the center, uh, the tip point of this rotation rod. OK. 
Okay. And this is this green line is also a IK which <coughs> is all using this same point as a root, this point as a middle point, and this point as a t tip point. Okay. Now after you have decided all these and by uh, by S by <coughs> using uh, by creating these red and green one as an IK, uh, you you'll be able to estimate this position right here and this position right here by rotating this blue rod. Okay, and by having a, this information from rod to the middle point, you'll be able to estimate this triangle shape. <coughs> Okay, now after you have this gut, you have got this triangle shape, and this shape will never change in terms of this angle. And you can decide how the, these angles are, but uh, for the strand beast that I'm referring to, this is probably 45 degrees, 45 degrees, and 90 degrees right here. Okay, now after this, after having these triangles, you want to have another uh, IK, which is to connect this point and this point, which are, which is already estimated. So either point can be a root. Well, let's say you want to make the initial uh, curve like these, and this point will be the middle point. This could be a root, and this could be a tip point for this IK. Okay, so by rotating this original like rotation rod, you'll be able to estimate this red and green. And by estimating this green and red, uh, green and red uh, lines, you'll be able to estimate this light blue. And by after having this light blue lines, you can have another fixed triangle shape, which you want to fix this angle and never changes. Probably this will be 30 degrees, uh, 60 degrees, and 30 degrees. You can just decide it by yourself. Okay. So <clears throat> that's the basic rule, and that's what I'm going to create here. Okay, I have a question from Moneyball9. Can you append other geo as a limbs? Let's say maybe mechanical structures. Yes, I yeah, you can do that. You can use the KinFX a <coughs> deform system or you can just copy the the line structures as the base uh, <coughs> structures and use it as a reference to apply some mechanical like limbs. You can totally do that. Uh, what I'm going to show you here is just creating the, the bone structures, but after that, you can just use that bone for any purposes. You can either use it for a soft body or you can use it for a hard body as well. All right, so let's see. So I am now inside this A. Let me just move this upward so that I can see it myself. Okay, so <clears throat> first of all, let's try to create a fixed a geometry. I mean the fixed rod, which doesn't really move. So I'm going to create it by creating the base by using the grid, the simple grid. Let's set the orientation to XY plane. Okay, and so uh, Luca is saying, I think there is a KinFX node to link pack frame to the rig. Yeah, I think so too. Um, I haven't, I haven't used that, so I'm not sure which one is that. So maybe I can do that in the other <coughs> videos. Uh, if you know how exactly you can do that, maybe I can try it today. But Let's just try to create the bones for today, and I might take some time. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to create the lengths by 5 by 1, like this, 
and what I'm going to do is to trim out one of the edge, I mean two of the edges and just left out with these L edge which is going to be a fixed <coughs> uh, line that I'm going to use as a bone at the core of this strand beast Okay, and what I would like to do is to use the transform node so that one of the point of this square will be aligned to the 0, 0, 0 positions so let's set the expression I'm going to say um, to the translate x I am going to say size <coughs> x multiply by 0.5 okay and I am going to also bring this down by minus size y my multiply by 0.5 okay so by doing this one of the point has been touching the the 0, 0, 0 positions now I am going to convert this into a line okay and just delete two of the points two of the lines or just delete one points in this case I would like to delete this point right here number three so I am just going to select that point or maybe select these primitive and delete it okay so that you are left out with just these three points and two edges Okay, now I am going to group this as a primitive group. Let's call this core. Okay, let me also save this somewhere. Okay. <clears throat> now, um, I would, uh, in order to use a KinFX. Uh, especially with the IK, it is a good idea to s set the name for each point because you have to define uh, which point is used as a tip point, which point is used as a root point, and it will be easier to define by the name. So I'm going to create the name for uh, some of the points, in this case, this point and this point. So for the, the point this point which is going to be the pivot point for the rotation rotation rod I'm going to name it as pivot so I'm going to create a name and for the group 2 I'm going to name this pivot and let's add one more and for the group the point number 1 I'm going to name it as root and should be point class. Okay, let's check that out. I'm going to go to the inspector geometry spreadsheet to the point and I can see root and pivot. All right, that's good. So that is for the setup, the initial setup. And I am going to, <coughs> first of all, create a one of the leg, uh, left side or right side. Uh, probably in this case, I'm going to create the right side reg, uh, leg starting from the right side leg so let's try to do that okay so <clears throat> uh, first thing I would like to do is to create a the rotation rod initialized at some direction or angle and by looking at the image like this one I would like to create a rod going this way Con corresponds to this uh, black fixed line so probably around 30 degrees from a top direction going to the right side uh, count, uh, I mean to the clockwise direction <clears throat> so let's try to do that right so I am going to create that I mean any way is fine but since I would like to set a attribute as well for the newly created rod 
I'm going to create, I'm going to just use the point wrangle for my ease. Okay, and I'm going to name it as initial rod. Oops. Initial rod. And since I would like to create the rod from this point, which is a pivot point, I'm going to set the groups to a name attribute equal to pivot. Okay, now <clears throat> let's try to create that. First of all, you can define several parameters for this rod. One is the angle, one is the length. So let's try to have that parameter. Okay, so float a angle and float length rod lengths I should call this rod angle <clears throat> by the way if anybody of you have understand it what I am going to do by the sketches I think you can just do it by all of your own by your own process the process that I'm going to show you is just following the <coughs> sketch that I have uh, ex drawn and ex as then I explain how you, cre you create the IK system and if you just know that idea I think you'll be able to just do the same thing for with your own process might be that might be more efficient than mine so keep that in mind okay so for the angle I'm gonna set it at 30 degrees for the rod lengths, it can be anything. I mean, I can stop by some arbitrarily value, uh, like a 1.8. So let's set the range for these parameters. For the lengths, I'm gonna set from 0 to 10. For the angle, I'm gonna set from what, 0 to ooh, 360. All right. Okay, now. Uh, I probably would like to use this angle as a rotation, so let's change this to radians first. Alright. Okay. Now, <clears throat> uh, first thing first, uh, let's try to mm, create the, the up direction and try to rotate that using this rotational angle. So going to create a matrix ident matrix and rotate that matrix to create a rotational matrix with this angle rod angle okay and the axis in this case should be z direction so set Zero, 01 zero, 01 okay now now that i have positioned uh wait a minute i feel like i am missing something here let me see let me try to see well I think it's fine. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is to create a rotational, I mean the up direction, which is 0, 1, 0. So let's try to rotate that by first of all creating the directional value. And I'm going to create a 0, 1, 0. <coughs> and rotate this by this rotational matrix okay <clears throat> now um, now I am going to create a new point or probably trying to create a new position uh, new position is equal to starting from the current point positions which in this case zero so doesn't really matter I think but let's just make sure and use direction okay 
now uh, for this one I am going to multiply it by the length of the rod okay so this should be the new positions and let's see where that position is going to be added uh, by using add point okay so somewhere around here so looks good looks and if I change these angle okay it's also changing this point positions now I would like to start by 30 degrees it seems to work uh, the best in this uh, strand beast okay now the for the rod lengths to yeah seems to work well I'm gonna stick with 1.8 now what I'm gonna do next is to create the line connecting from this pivot to this point so Let's do that. Int line is equal to add prim zero poly line from the current point number to this new point. Okay, like this. Now, <clears throat> I would like to set some attributes uh, to these uh, geometries. Uh, one thing uh, is the primitive group to this line that I've created. I'm going to set the primitive group, set prim group 0. Let's call this um, tip rod, oh, rotation rod, rotation rod to the line that I've just created. And also for the new point that I've created, I would like to set uh, an attribute which is later on going to be used as a tip tip point for this inverse kinematics for the red one and this green one so I am going to name it as a tip by setting the name attribute so set point attrib 0 name to this new point with tip I have a comment, Manival9. Also, I'm a bit lost on directing nodes to other areas in the Houdini session, meaning OP input pass. If you get some time, you can explain these for me as well. Villa di directing nodes to other areas in the Houdini session. Hmm. Ah, okay. I see what you mean. Yeah, if I got some times after these uh, I will let me see if I can explain that okay so let's see uh, so that I, I now I have just created this rotational rod currently it's not rotating yet I'm gonna rotate it later uh, for now I'm going to what I would like to do is to create an initial geometry as a static state so first thing to do is to create this static rod static like this uh, shape on the top and static shape on the bottom after that you can try to rotate this rod to calculate the inverse kinematics for the top and the bottom using the existing geometry all right so let's try to do that okay so Let's try to create those shapes for the top part and the bottom part. In this case, what I mean is this red lines and green lines. So two lines for the top, two lines for the bottom. And meaning you have to define this M positions, the middle positions for the red and the green. Um, <coughs> initially, any way you want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this uh, sketch and let's say the middle point is 90 degrees from this edge, right? the black edge. And for this one, I'm going to uh, estimate that the length of this green one is same as this black one. 
I'm not sure if um, that's what I did, but let's <coughs> estimate that. I mean, you can just use any other like random values by yourself, but to make it a bit simple, I'm going to define, I'm going to link those lengths together. But don't forget that uh, you can just change it by yourself if you want. Although the result might not look like the original strand piece, so that's the <clears throat> downside. For this, uh, I mean, for this tutorial, I would like to create a strand beast as it is, so I'm going to try to follow the original shape. Okay, so let's try to create another point wrangle. So, I'm going to connect this initial rotating rod to this first point, first input, and let's name this um, top. IK models. Okay, and I'm going to create two parts. One on the top, one on the bottom. Starting from the top. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do, <clears throat> I'm going to create the middle point somewhere around here. Okay, so Let's name this PTM1 and use the add point zero and the position will be okay. First of all, I have to define in from which point I should start uh, calculating this point positions. So I'm going to set the group name is equal to root. The root is this point right here. So from this point, I'm going to try to go upward and go to this direction, okay? Which should be the easiest way to create this top part because you just have, from this point, you just have to go upside, upward to the Y direction with, without any angle, so it should be easy. So the first point is going from the current point position plus set zero, 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 and the first, the second value should be the length of this uh, edge. Now, what I would like to do is to set the edge length same as this grid width right here. So probably it's a good idea to parameterize this one so that I can link it all together. So I'm going to create a null node to have all those parameters that I would like to control later on. So if the first value is the size of the rod, I mean size of this fixed uh, grid, now the x, Oops. probably I should make it as a float. So core x, core x size, and you have core y size as well, core y size. Let's make both of them from 0 to 10. Now I have also created this parameter for the rod, so let's also have that drag and drop. I'm gonna call this rod angle. And this is the initial rod angle, so I'm gonna make sure that I, I'm going to name it as init initial. And for the rod lengths, I'm just gonna call rod lengths. <coughs> okay. Everything looks good. Now apply, accept, and set the core x to 5, core y to 1, and I'm just going to copy this parameter, paste it right here. Pa copy this parameter from the y value and paste it to the y. All right. And then use the same parameter, which is this x value, for the, these 
the this uh, line length. So let's try to get that value float um, for x chf. We'll promote it. Link by base relative reference, not dy, but x. And in this case, you have five, so you want to have this core x to y directional value. And the new point will come somewhere around here. Okay, looks good. Now, <clears throat> uh, what I want to do now is to have this point right here uh, so that I can connect these points together to create this uh, top IK uh, lines. So to do that, um, I need to know the point number of this uh, point right here. You can just check that by showing the point number like this. But to make it safe, I I know that this point uh, right uh, this point has a name called tip. If you look at the geometry spreadsheet, you see that uh, the point has its name called tip. So um, I would like to try to find out the point number by this uh, name attribute by using the PTT one is equal to find at riv val from zero point class an attribute that I'm looking at is name and the value that I'm looking for is tip and get the first result okay as a result you'll be able to get this tip point and to check that out you can try to create a polyline connecting all these points okay so let's try to do that int prim or ik model one is equal to add prim zero <coughs> polyline f starting from the pt num which is the current root point and then going into the ptm1 with a middle point and ptt1 which is the tip point okay as a result you'll be able to get this top shape that's good now I would like to also apply a attribute to the point that I've just added as a middle point. So let's name this middle as a name. So set point at rev zero name to this PTM one as middle. Okay, let's check that out. Okay, so I have this middle at number four it looks correct okay all right <clears throat> what's next so i have just created the top uh, ik model let's also try to group this so that i can separate it later on i'm going to create a prim primitive group set prim group zero I'm gonna name it ik1 to this poly line that I've created, I can model one. Okay. The next step is to create the bottom part. In the sketch looks like uh, what which is this green one. Okay. Now um I also need to define the angle right here in which direction should it go and also I have to define this length right here. And I could probably use the same lengths like this one together with this this one. Let's see if that's suitable. <clears throat> yeah, probably that's fine. So let's try to do that way. And once you know you have this point positions, you just need to connect with the tip point. Okay, so it shouldn't be that hard. Let's do that. So bottom IK okay, model. Okay, so um the initial angle that I would like to use is since this one looks like a
the polygonal triangle which means that all the lengths of this triangle seems like the same if I if I just look at this part so let's try to make the initial angle as 60 I mean you could also change that however you want you can also parameterize it but in this case I'm just gonna fix it because I don't want to have too much initial parameters to control with but uh, <coughs> depends on you if you want to control more you can also parameterize this part as well so I'm just gonna call this angle and let's say 60 and con use convert it into a radians Okay, now let's create the middle point too. By at point zero, <coughs> starting from the current point, same as the top part. And then you have to go uh, downward and to a 60 degrees direction so probably using some simple trigon trigonometry might be a pretty easy to do in this case so uh, what I'm going to do I'm going to s define the X by using a cosine angle so cosine angle and for the Y direction I'm going to use the sine with the angle and for the Z, it's zero. And you also want to define the length, which is same as this core X. So multiply it with this one and see where the point will come. Okay, it comes right here. So looks like, first of all, you have to make the sine values to negative, probably the cosine as well. Okay, so looks like it's at this correct positions now now that I have this point um, I'm also going to apply the name attribute which I have done right here so I'm gonna just copy this one and rename this to PTM2 then I'm going to create the primitive uh, I mean the polyline connecting the root the middle point to the tip now I already have this tip number right here so I can just reuse it because it doesn't really change so I'm gonna copy this part IK model 2 is equal to add prim polyline ptnum ptm2 and ptt1 all right looks good now let's also apply a group to this bottom IK I'm gonna name it IK2 Okay, that's probably it for <coughs> this initial geometry, initial inverse kinematic geometries. That's good. <coughs> All right, so let's uh, after having all the all those two uh, geometries, what I'm gonna do is to separate them and probably using something like split. For the first input, I'm going to get the IK1. And from the second input, I'm going to get the IK2. Okay, and I'm going to calculate the inverse kinematics for both of them separately. Okay, okay, now. <clears throat> I now have this initial geometry and I have this initial uh, rotation rotating rod the next thing I need is this rod to be actually rotated so let's do that so I am going to create uh, I'm going to use another <coughs> wrangle <coughs> point wrangle probably or in this case um, what I would like to do is to try to rotate this <coughs> primitive itself using this point as a pivot so let's get this primitive and I have attached 
a group called rotation rod. So let's try to use a primitive wrangle in this case. Primitive wrangle with this filter so that only this primitive is going to be used as a calculation as a process for the code. I'm gonna name this rotate rot. Oops. Rot. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, first of all hmm, what I would like to do is to get the point list from this primitive. In this case you only have two points, the starting point and the end point. So, and I'm gonna use both of them to calculate the rotation. So PTS is equal to prim points zero at prim num. And let's get each of the point, the starting point and this end point. I'm gonna name it the starting point as PT1. And uh, end point is PT2. <coughs> okay, now let's get the point position for both of the point. PT1 vector position 2 is equal to point PT2. All right, now that I have this, these two points, um, the point one will be the p pivot for the rotation and the point two is the actual point that is going to be rotated. Okay, so now is the time to create a rotational matrix for the rotation. I'm going to create the ident first, use the rotate with some angle. Now I haven't defined the angle yet. Um, let's just say angle for now and set zero, zero, one as a rotational axis. Now let's also, let's now try to create this angle value. And since I want to make it as an, an animation, I'm going to make the angle based on this frame value. Okay. So hmm. let's see what's the good value for the angle. I'm going to start by try by creating the angle by trying to divide the current frame or I'll just test it by just using the time itself and later on I'm gonna make it more <coughs> sophisticated so that I can you can create the loop animation all right for now it doesn't really loop but it should be fine as a testing okay now that I have s set the angle it's time to actually rotate the point two, point position two. To do that, first thing you need to do, I'm going to create the new positions, which is the copy of the position two. And oops, spell mistake. The new pos you first want to subdivide with the position one, which is the pivot point position. Then you can multiply with the rotational matrix to actually rotate it and give back, bring back the pivot position. And then this new position will be the rotated new point position two. Okay, so let's update the position two by set point attrib zero p to pt2 with this new position okay if I play it okay it's rotating like this now <clears throat> I'm not sure which direction is the right way to rotate currently it's rotating clockwise so let's assume this is fine now this seems a bit too fast maybe I should apply this real-time toggle Okay, looks good. Now let's try to do with let's try to test it out the kinematic inverse kinematics with this point. So right now you have this rod rotating and the tip point of this rod is actually the tip point of this inverse kinematic. And since I am going to create the inverse kinematic 
inverse kinematic, inverse kinematic for using this geometry for the top and this geometry for the bottom. And as I said in the sketch, this for this top part, this point is going to be used as a root, this point is going to be used as a middle, and this point is going to be used as the tip point. Now currently by after I have rotated this tip point, the tip the position of the tip point is not aligned, but uh, by using a converse kinematics you can um, using you can use something like point wrangle to fix this position so that it always attach to this rotating tip point and as a result it will calculate the correct position for this middle point by preserving the length of this uh, edge and as a result you'll be able to create this kind of a simple um, me mechanics me mechanism okay all right so let's try to do that okay so and this part is the actual uh, KinFX part. So first of first thing first, I am going to set up the initial do the initial setup for the rig. Use it for the KinFX by using the rig doctor. Combine so that I can convert this rod as a rig. Now I'm seeing this edge right here, but I shouldn't be displayed. Okay, that's still that's gone. Now I'm also going to check this initial transform so that you be able to get all those necessary transformation, which is uh, going to be, which is going to be necessary later on. All right. Now, uh, next thing I want to do is to move this point right here so that it always aligns with it always fixed it always uh, move toward to this tip point the rotating tip point okay so I'm just gonna do that by the simple point wrangle just by transferring this point just by by moving this point to this point okay so connect this output of this rec doctor to the first input and for the second input I'm going to refer to this rotating rod okay and I'm gonna name this move tip. Right. And <clears throat> the I should filter which point I should do the process with in this case I only want to process on this tip point, so I'm going to say the name is equal to tip. Alright. And what I what I need to do next is to get the point position for this rotating rod, okay, which is also have the name attribute called tip. So let's find out. I'll find that out first as a point number. Which point number it that is? I'm gonna use the same uh, function that I've used previously, which is find attrib val and going to look at the point class the attribute name is name and the uh, actual attribute value is tip and get the first value first result okay by doing this you'll be able to get the point number for this point and after having that you'll be able to get the point position as well by using the point function with the p attribute at pt okay and you just want to copy this point position to this tip. So you want to copy this point position to this one so that this point will come to this point. Like this. Okay, did it go? Nope, didn't. Okay, I think I'm missing something. Alright, okay, I should make this, I should look at the f second input. That was the problem. Okay. Now it looks good. So if I do the rotation, it looks like this. Now, currently, only the tip point is rotating and nothing right here is being affected by this rotation. But <clears throat> after creating the IK chain here for these three points, you'll be able to move these points together with this rotation. 
So to do that, you are going to use this IK chains node. Okay, the first input is going to be the initial positions where the the kinematic lines, okay, kinematic model and the original rod positions is aligned like this. So make this the second uh, first input. And for the second input, you want to connect this one where the tip point has been moved. Okay. And <clears throat> the first input means that you want to pre preserve this length of each line. Okay, now the next thing you want to do is to go to the IK chain and set some parameters. Which one is going to be used as a root, which one is going to be used as a middle and so on. Click plus, you'll be able to get uh, one IK chain. Now the root name is root, the middle name, middle, tip name, tip. And you also want to set this part as well, the twist name. I mean, in this case, you don't really have a twisting, but let's just say, just set that middle and uh, goal name is tip. This one, this one, goes this one and this one. And set the blend to one. Okay, I think that's it. And by doing it, you after, let me also show up the rotation rod. And if you play it, there you go. You have a initial IK uh, leg. I mean the uh, the link mechanism. All right. So do the same for the second IK, the bottom IK. Which probably pretty much the same things that I'm gonna do. Copy the Rick Doctor and move the tip. Okay, let's test this out. This working? Yeah, it's working. And do the IK chain. Okay. I probably am missing something. Let's see what I'm missing. Okay, let me check this IK2 geometry spreadsheet. Oh, seems to have, uh, seems, seems like I have unnecessary information right here. IK1 just has this triangle. Okay, this IK2 have this, uh, the core geometry as well. So I have to uh, remove that, forgot to do that. So before splitting, I'm going to use the delete node to delete the core. Right. Actually, I also need to delete this <coughs> rotation rod as well. So, okay. Instead of using the split, I'm going to use the two delete node and just pick up the IK1. Delete non selected and IK2. Delete non selected. Okay, am I getting the right value? Nope. Oops. Seems like I am having the same value for IK1 and IK2. Let's see why. If I look at the primitive, um, I this one IK one IK two okay, so I I think I set the group to the wrong model. Okay, this has to be IK model two, where I have attached the IK two group. Okay, now it should be correct. You get the top IK model, the bottom IK model. If you go back here and show up the rotation rod and see, okay, looks like it's working correctly. 
And if you combine all these, looks like these. Nice. All right. <clears throat> so next thing you want to do is to create this triangle shape right here on the left side of this red IK, the top IK, which is the fixed shape which uh, rotates along with this uh, side edge. So that shouldn't be that hard to do. Let's, let's see uh, how we should do that. Okay, so I'm gonna do it by referring to this IK1 right here. <clears throat> and try to pick this edge and try to create the triangle. All right, so let's, let's do that. So I'm going to, um, let's see which wrangle I should use. I am going to use the, mm -hmm, did, does this one have, a primitive attribute actually no this is a, just a single primitive and okay well I guess I should just use the point wrangle for this one as starting with the root point so point wrangle for this top IK and I'm gonna name it as side triangle maybe one or I'll just say side triangle okay and I'm gonna filter it by looking at the name equal to root okay so from this point uh, I'm going I would like to get create this triangle shape in this case I'm just going to like set the fixed angle in this case 90 degrees to the left and 45 degrees for this angle right here and this angle right here to make it simple. I mean, you can always change that angle as well if you want, but I'm gonna make it simple. So to do that, uh, first thing you wanna do is to get this point positions so that I, I can get this directional value so that I can then rotate it 90 degrees to get the 90 degree positions. So, Get, let's get that one and that one has the name called middle so let's find that point ptm is equal to <clears throat> find attrib val zero and point name middle zero okay and let's also get the point position for this middle point. Position point M PTM. All right. Now that I have this middle point positioned, and I already have this point current point position by accessing to add P, I'll be able to get the direction. So the vector direction is equal to a pos m minus p. Okay, and I am not going to normalize it because I, I'm, I would like to just use the same length for this rotated value. Okay, now I'm going to create the rotational matrix to rotate 90 degrees to the counterclockwise direction. So matrix mat and rotate mat radians minus 90 degrees with 0, 0, 1 as an axis and rotate this direction with the matrix and then get the new position by adding the current point position plus the direction. All right. And I am going to add a new point at PT at point zero new positions. And it comes somewhere around here. Looks good. Looks like the correct positions. 
Now, uh, in order to create a triangle shape, what I am going to do now <coughs> is to just create... Um, let's see what kind of shape I would like to create. Uh, I would like to try to create this kind of shape, this kind of triangle, from root to this point to this point. Okay, and I'm not going to create this line because this line is already been used by, I mean, created by this uh, top IK model. So, just I'm just going to create this polyline, going from this root to the middle point to this point. All right, so let's do that. <coughs> and polyline is equal to add prim zero poly polyline from ptnum uh, new point to the middle point so ptm all right <clears throat> okay let's also set the group to this new primitive set prim group zero try side side try to this polyline and let's also set a name for this newly created point which you might want to refer to it later so set point attrib zero name <coughs> to this new point I'm just gonna call this try as a triangle point triangle middle point which I okay so after that uh, you don't really need these on um, this geometry IK top IK geometry anymore because you're gonna add it later on with the merge node separately so I'm going to remove that I can re use the remove prim zero since initially there is only one primitive so I can just say zero zero one all right seems to work fine Okay, now I have created this tri uh, triangle. Let's see if it moves along with the other IKs. Okay, actually, not. So we need what we need to do now is to rotate this triangle based on this moving IK right here. So maybe. I might be able to create this triangle after I have rotated this. Might be better, isn't it? Okay, so let's try to do that. If I connect this one right here. Okay, now. Yeah, looks good. So this seems to work fine. So let's do this this way. Alright. Now, next thing. The final IK, and this is going to be the the. <clears throat> this is going to be the uh, final IK, and this is the essence of the linking system. You are going to attach another IK right here, this light blue one, to the tip of this triangle, and to the tip of this green uh, middle point. The bottom IK model, and make it as another IK. Okay. So that's what you want to do. That's what I want to do here. Okay, so let's try to do that. And to do that, I'm going to go back to this one right here. To do that, uh, you need to set, you need to create a initial geometry first then then move uh, some of the point to move along with the uh, with the this this uh, middle point of this bottom <coughs> ik uh, as a tip point so for the, for the top part you just want to create the line that moves along with it but doesn't really change the shape the length of the uh, of this edge right here okay so let's try to create that so 
I'm gonna start I'm gonna do that in the single frame I mean starting frame because it's easier to see All right so let's do that by do, do, do. I'm going to create a point and I'm going to use the another mm, point wrangle should be fine and what I'm gonna do is to since I would like to create this point as a root for the new IK and this as a new point, middle point and this as a new tip point for the new IK so I'm gonna start with this side triangle and this I have just set the name of this point right here as a try so I'm gonna filter it by saying name is equal to tree all right <clears throat> And let's name this bottom IK model. Hello, everybody. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, so, first of all, I am going. I'm going to. I I think I should replace the point name for this one. Currently, it is named as try but since I want to use the IK to make it simple to understand I'm going to rename it as rename the name attribute as root okay <clears throat> now next um, I am going to let's see what kind of shape I need to create in this case so in this case if I look at this one right here, at the sketch, let's, let's choose another color somewhere around here. Okay, so s currently this one has 60 degrees. So probably I would like to make this angle 60 degrees as well. And the lengths of this one might be better if if I share the same length as this value right here, which is equal to this length as well, so which is our original core x value. So it will be easier to understand. As a result, this length will also be the core x. And the angle right here, 120 degrees. Okay, so. So you'll be able to easily estimate this middle point positions you go down by I mean maybe you can just use another trigonometry to estimate this point positions just like you did right here okay so let's try to do that shall we shall we shall we all right So maybe I can just copy where I have created, where I have used this uh, trigonometry. Where was that? Somewhere around here. This one. Okay, so I'm gonna copy this part and bring it back to the bottom of my K gonna name it PTM is equal to at point now currently the ang I don't have an angle value but I can just say 60, 60 degrees now as I said before you can also parameterize this if you want I'm just gonna fix it as 60 for this one and you also need this core X parameter so let's have that core X is equal to x which you can reference from this core x size okay and paste it right here okay I'm having an uh, error somewhere where is that float? Okay, I think I should name this angle. All right, so now I have this point where I need it. Looks good. Okay, so 
and I do need the additional point going to the right side from this point somewhere around here going to the in this case negative x direction by the core x length so let's name that int ptt at point zero let's have this calculate positions as um the attribute i mean the variable i'm gonna name it as pos m copy all these right here and from pos m i'm going to add a another vector going to the negative x direction by core x and zero for y and z all right looks good now i want to connect all these points together to make it as a polyline int new prim is equal to add prim as a polyline starting from the pt num ptm and ptt all right looks good now i don't need the top part anymore so i can just delete that by using the remove prim and previously there's only one primitive so i can just say like this all right now <clears throat> for the newly created points i also need to set the name attribute just like i did for the other points so for the middle point i'm gonna set the name as set the name attribute as middle set point attrib zero name ptm as middle and for the tip point the last point i'm gonna name it as tip ptt tip all right <clears throat> let's check that out going to the geometry spreadsheet of the point if i have all the names well that's a lot of where is it? Where is it? Name attribute. Hmm. Do I see it? Nope. I don't seem to see it. Okay. Set point attribute. I think I have done it. Is it? Ah. Okay. So I'm looking at the point. Is there a name attribute? Okay, there is so triangle. Alright. Actually I need I want to make this as a root instead of the triangle. So it's not really updated. Ah, I shouldn't use equal equal. I should just use one equal. Alright, so root middle tip looks good. Okay, now that I have created this <coughs> um, base geometry, what I do is the same as I am doing right here. So I'm going to copy these and connect it like this. Now I need to modify a little bit for this one right here because the point that I need to refer to in order to stick this tip point right here is different than previous one so I'm just gonna delete this one and, and let's try to see how it looks right currently by showing all the IK models all together together with this triangle and see how this shape moves right now and if I play it okay so it looks like these now what I need to do, what I want to do here is to attach this point to this point right here. And by doing it, I want to estimate the this point and uh, <coughs> to preserve the length of these joint. Okay, which will make, which will create a linking mechanism. All right. And that is not that hard to do. You just need to move this point to this point. So you, what you just need to know is the 
point position of this triangle tip right here which is which you can get it from the bottom IK part maybe you could we should look at the animated one and the, this point has the name called middle so that's simple enough you just need to connect this to the second input of this move tip triangle and you just have to change a little bit I uh, instead of the, looking for the tip point you are currently you looking for the middle point all right and as a result the tip point now changes and by using IK you'll be able to preserve the length of the <clears throat> okay now it's flipping a little bit that is because if you look at right here at some point it just somewhere around here you can see that it the direction just flips like these so that's that's kind of a problem here so in order to <clears throat> uh, in order to prevent flipping this kind of flipping you need to move this middle point just a bit far away from the center and left direction left bottom direction probably so let's try to do that and to do that <clears throat> I can just do it in the same move tip component I mean the wrangle right here so to do that first of all I need to know this point number right here so I'm just gonna say or probably it might be a good idea just to have another wrangle just to just to move the middle point somewhere in between this one this rig doctor and this move tip because I don't want to like make this dirty I want to make it simple so I'm gonna create a another point wrangle like this one and let's name fix middle position and set the filter so that the name is equal to middle so that the middle point will only be used for the calculations now uh, the direction I want to go for this point is uh, if you think geometrically you can first of all get the middle point from this point to this point somewhere around here and from this point to this point you can get the directional value so to this direction you, you, you want to move this point far away so let's get this direction and try to move this middle point far you don't really need to care about changing the length of these edges because that has been preserved in the first input of this IK chain so for the second input you can do whatever you can just change the length whatever you want all right it'll just fix it by using this solution all right so to do to get the neighbor points I will use the neighbor neighbors function uh, neighbors like this oops nay point uh, spell mistake was it neighbors all right hmm Okay, I'm, I'm getting the errors because I didn't make it as an array. All right. Okay, now let's get the average point position between these two points. So I'm going to first of all create the average point position starting from zero and then use the for loop to look into all the neighbor points. Although there should only be two points. and get the point position for each neighbor point 
accessing to a point attribute. Point zero p at neighbor. All right. <clears throat> now, and what you want to do is to add it to the average point position uh, variable right here. And after you have added all the positions, you can then divide it by the lengths of the neighbors. And then you get the average point position. Let's make sure that I'm going to divide by the float value. Might not be necessary because this itself is a float array. So now I have got the average point position, should be somewhere around here. I'm going to create a directional vector value, which is at p negative average positions. Now for this one, I'm going to normalize this. And set the length to a bit really high value, like, I don't know, 50 or something. Any value is fine. I mean, even 100 should be fine. And then move the point to that direction, which will create kind of a too much exaggerated middle point positions but this is to prevent the flipping and that's the only purpose and if you play it no more flipping happens and if you go to the ik chain looks good everything looks good now <clears throat> at this point let's try to merge all those iks and fixed triangles to see how it looks like so this one this one this side triangle right here and this K right here okay and it might be a good idea to colorize differently for now to see <coughs> which one's which so I'm gonna set the top one to the red the bottom one to green the side triangles to orange and the the bottom IK to be light blue all right <clears throat> and I am also missing the core so let's also add the core which is which you can get anywhere because it you don't doesn't really move so probably you can just get it right here just directly connecting this one like this and for core I'm just gonna set the color to white as it is okay and okay I think I'm also missing the rod here so let's get that one as well okay I'm just going to connect this instead of this rotating rod. Okay. Now the color is gone. Why? <laughs> okay. So if I play it, looks like these. Looks good. Mm -hmm. Now what I am left out with is just this fixed triangle which moves along with the bottom edge of this um, <clears throat> bottom IK so that should be pretty simple to make so you are almost done here for the one side of the leg alright so let's try to create that one I'm going to move at any frame now let's see where I should do that. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I am going to... First of all, let's uh, check the rule. What kind of... What what size of the... What kind of size I want to create as a bottom triangle shape. Okay, so... Obviously, this side length is L. 
and you want to use the 60 degrees for this one and 90 degrees for this one so in this case probably creating a triangle from this point might be easy going at the bottom then after you have created this point you already have this this point so easy to create this polyline so what you need is the length of this um, triangle right here a triangle edge right here so you can just use the trigonometry since this is a 30 degrees and you already have this L right here <clears throat> so and let's say this is L dash or L quote so L quote divided by L is equal to a tangent of 3 degrees so L <coughs> uh, dash is equal to tangent 3 degrees L okay so this should be the value you want I think alright so let's try to use this value okay going back where was I so after I have created this bottom okay from this one I could try to create <coughs> the the bottom triangle shape starting from this point right here and let's see if this point has its name let me check well it, it actually should be a tip point so let's start from the tip okay so at name equal to tip and you just need to have the y directional value so first of all let's have the core x length chf core x which is the length you are using all over the places just this value right here so copy this one paste it right here all right and <clears throat> uh, what else Okay, so I have core x, so let's create a new point. So new point, the middle point, btm is equal to add point 0, set 0, minus core x 0, oops, not to, okay, something is wrong, okay. What I need to do is adding from the current point positions, all right. And this actually is not the core x, but I have to use the same equations that I have used here. L divided by tangent 30. So core x divided by a tangent of radians, 30 degrees. Okay, so the point came here. Now I can create a new polyline. At frame zero, ptnum, ptm, and I don't really have this point number yet, so I have to also find that one. Let's do that. So int. Um, this is actually a middle point, the middle name attribute. So I can create. Probably I shouldn't name this one as a PTM, but let's say PT1 and or a PT2. That is, I can get that by using a fine attribute val zero point class uh, name attribute middle in the first result. Okay, and then PT2. Oops. 
should change this to PT1. All right, <clears throat> looks good. Now you are ready to go. And let's remove the original ge this geometry right here. So remove trim zero zero one, just like I did for all the all the other stuff. Okay, it's not deleting. Maybe it's a cache problem. Hopefully, is it? Hmm. If I look at uh, there's only one primitive, so I guess this is just the cache here. Yeah, I think so. All right, so let's color this to another color. I'll just use the same orange as a triangle. Let's combine it right here. Okay. And everything is set for the one leg. Okay, okay, something is wrong here. Okay, ah, right. Okay, what I did wrong is I kind of actually needed to use this direction and rotate it 90 degrees. Other, uh, I cannot just move to Y direction directly, so that that was the problem. Okay, sorry for that. So, yeah, that was the problem. So to do that, you actually need to hmm, get this point first. I'm going to move this right here and get that point position. I'm gonna name it as pulse M and you get the point position like this. <clears throat> Alright, now I can now calculate the directional value. Vector direction by subtracting position M subtract by the current point position. Alright, now I can also create a matrix rotational matrix. Uh, starting from ident, rotate, mat, radians, 90 degrees, my, to the z-axis, then rotate this direction by the matrix. <coughs> now, now I can probably do, what I could do here is keep this tangent value but instead of using the core x I'm gonna say dear x divided by this tangent oops and I think I have too many parentheses do I like this Okay, to the other direction, so I should change this angle to minus 90 degrees. All right. Now it is rotating as I expected. Looks good. Let me change the color to the orange. Okay, so the orange part is not changing its shape. Only these blue, green, and red one is changing the shape. And the blue one is being uh, changing based on this red and green IK. So this is the this sense essence of the linking mechanisms. All right, so the one part is done. You are left out with the other side and all the other layers. Uh, but once you have this one side, it's not that hard to do for the other side. Okay, so let's try to do that. What I'm going to do, I'm going to use the for loop I'm gonna use the forward number for each number just set it to 2 so that I can have the left side and the right side <coughs> and connect it where I should connect connect it right after the name the initial setup for the core so somewhere around here and bring the end 
node to somewhere around here. Just cover it up and connect it like this. Now currently <coughs> there are two legs right here but it is uh, positioned at the same position so for the other for the second leg I want to flip it 180 degrees Okay, I'm gonna should connect it right here. I should flip it in 180 degrees so that I can see the the other side. So let's try to do that. Uh, to do that, I am going to do a rotation right after this merge node using either I'm using the uh, transform node. Case and based on the iteration value, I would like to change the angle. So for the Y rotation, I'm going to refer to the this detail attribute of this for each count, which at the detail attribute you have this iteration value goes from 0 to 1. So I am going to refer to that value detail for each count. Iteration 0 multiplied by 180 degrees. Okay, as a result, you kind of get the mirrored shape like this, which is not really an ideal. You have to, for the one side of the geometry, you want to rotate it the, the other direction. So let's also fix that. This itself looks also interesting, but this is not really, really not a strand beast shape, so I'm going to fix it. So I'm going to bring this uh, for each count somewhere close to where it controls the rotation, which is this one right here, rotation rod. So <clears throat> uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to connect the this metadata to the second input of this rotate rod and try to use this iteration value to flip the other side, one side of the leg to the other uh, direction. Okay, so let's try to do that. First of all, I'm going to get that iteration value. Detail. Like this. Now, <coughs> Now that I have the situations, the things that I want to change is this angle, which is controlled by the frame-based value. In this case, I'm using the time global attribute. So one side could be rotating clockwise, one, and for the other side, this one can uh, rotate in the other direction, counterclockwise. Later on, it one side is going to be flipped by 100 degrees, so. Uh, the final the rotation direction is going to be aligned as the same value uh, same direction so that's the point and so let's try to do that I uh, am what I'm gonna do um, somewhere I'm gonna make a space right here I'm gonna create a attribute called mult okay starting bid one and if the iteration is more than zero, then set the mult to negative one. Or mm, to make it as a one line, since iteration, I know that the iteration value is between zero to one, I can subtract iteration by 0.5 and multiply by 2 you'll be able to get the volume between negative 1 and 1 now I can multiply it to this angle value like this and as a result you can see that uh, each leg is rotating in the same directions. Now I want to fix one more. You can see that there's kind of offset 
you see there's a bit of offset between this uh, rotating rod and this rotating rod so I want to fit that to the same uh, positions so let's also do that <coughs> and to do that I, I, I need to add additional angle to one of the angle when it rotates so let's do that or I can just try to make it to the same direction I mean currently I don't have uh, the, the offset angle is this value right here and this is actually the multiplication of two uh, multiplication of <coughs> the the two time value of this angle is actually this the <coughs> offset the gap here if I make it zero it will be fixed but the rotation might not looks clean I mean it looks okay but it seems like the original <coughs> um, strand beast has offset somewhere around 30 so when I change this initial angle and when I want to fit these angle together I'm going to copy this value right here bring it to this rotational rod <coughs> bring it right here as a parameter promote it paste it right here and try to use this to fit the angle together now to do that um, just need to add the this initial angle multiply by mult maybe the other way negative nope actually not um mm -mm. I probably need to multiply by 0.5 no actually not all right what do I need to do here okay let me think so hmm. the init angle is always ah, okay I, I needed to convert it into radians forgot to do that so, sorry for that okay so now plus init angle multiplied by mult nope hmm. oh I'm missing something mm -mm. oh worked just worked like this I didn't need it the multiplication if I make it plus Okay, so it's negative. So it's negative initial angle, and that seems to fix it. That seems to fit the positions. All right. So for this, that looks good. All right. Now, <clears throat> now that the one part, I mean one layer of the leg is done like this, it's time to create another layers with a offset angle so that it looks like it's working gradually or like a monster like a beast so let's try to do that to do that i'm going to create another for loop for each loop using for each number and this time you can set the number of iterations as much as you want this will be the number of layers so let's have that as a parameter mm. num layers I'm gonna go from 1 to 20 maximum okay gonna stop by some low value like 8 paste it Okay, so 
this is going to be coming on top of the this <coughs> two iteration for loop I'm gonna connect like these cover it up making a double loop so currently actually there are five uh, eight pairs of this walking beast at the same positions but you cannot really see it so you have to offset this one maybe to the z direction in this case so let's do that to do that i am going to use another iteration value for this for it, the second loop for each count two so um instead of using transform for for a more control i'm going to use the pointer angle uh, since i want to also set some attributes for each based on its each iterations more than just moving so currently the for each loop it is a bit far so i'm going to connect the null node right here i'm gonna name this meta2 and probably connect the other value right here and let's call this meta1 Okay, so in order to access to this meta 2 from far away, you can use the object merge. <coughs> Let's name it as meta 2, 2, 1. I'll refer to the meta 2, connect it to the second input. Now, trans, uh, translate. Okay. First, I get the iteration value from the meta node. Like, like this. And based on these iterations, you can set like the distance to the z directions. Now, probably it's a good idea to set the length, how much depth you want for these layers. So I'm going to create another parameter called depths. Depths. From, I don't know, from 0 to 50 or 100. I don't know what's the best value for this one. Let's copy this. And paste it. Let's bring this uh, depths value to here as a parameter. this okay now now that I have this depth value let's try to use the iteration together with this depth to control the point position in between the zero to the maximum depth all right so <clears throat> um, might be a good idea to also get the, the number of iteration value from the same detail num iterations Right. First thing first, I'm going to create a parameter value going from zero to one by uh, converting the in in iteration value from zero to one. Remap the iteration value from zero to one by dividing the iteration by the number of iteration. Now the number of iteration should be subtract by one if you want to have the range from 0 to 1 and you also need to convert it into float otherwise you get the result 0 because it looks like it a division between integer and integer all right I think this T is now from 0 to 1 based on the iteration value I can now create a each depth information I'm gonna call this each depths or I'll just say Z Z positions by the depths divided by the number of iterations minus one multiplied by T. Okay, should do the job. 
and if you update the Z with this one, if you leave the loop, okay, it's been layered. Now it looks like there's not much. Okay, now finally you need to. Hmm. Am I doing something? Um. Oh, okay, I think I did something wrong here. Actually, I didn't really need it to create this t value, but I just need to multiply by duration right here. All right. Okay, so this is the depths of 15 and you can now change the steps and change the layers now everything is working at the same timing which is good but I would like to also change the timing the rotational timing so let's also try to do that I'm going to create another parameter for that purpose I'm going to create the parameter called as a shift angle from 0 to I don't know, 100 degrees maximum. Let's start by 90 degrees. So for each layers, I want to shift this rotation of this rod by 90 degrees. First, first rod comes right here. The second rod rotates by 90 degrees. The third rod rotates 100 degrees. Uh, the fourth rod rotates 270 degrees and so on. Incremented by 90 degrees. All right, to do that, you can do it per layers. I mean, uh, yeah, per layers, I think. So, but with the what I want to control is this rotation right here, which is controlled right here at this rotate rod point wrangle. So we need to get this layer information with this uh, wrangle. So to do that, I am going to connect this method to to the third input of this rotational rod. What did I do? Okay, and access that information to use it as a um, shift rotational value. And iteration two, detail two, iteration. <clears throat> and so this is where I'm calculating the angle. And I could get the shift angle parameter right here. So shift angle, shift angle. Okay, let's copy that parameter, 90 degrees to this one. And then convert it into radians. No. Now you can go to the angle right here and for each angle I am going to add this shift angle shift angle multiply by the iteration 2 so starts from 0 1 2 3 based on the layer numbers all right something happened and if I play it yep now it looks more like uh, organism like a creature all right looks good now let's reduce the number of layers it's a bit hard to see what that, what's going on here we can see the <clears throat> the angle is shift by 90 degrees and it looks already organic looks good all right now um you can try to change the number of layers together with the shift angle. I mean, if it's small number, it looks like a gradient rotation like these. Looks interesting enough. 
right, like that. And you can change the depths. What else? We can try to change the lengths. Now this seems to collapse. <laughs> So maybe it might not be a good idea to change the core lengths. What about the Y? Interesting. It's starting to look like more like a glove. If I make it really small, still try to create some movement. Interesting. And if I change the initial rotational angle, the movement becomes really tricky. But it seems to work well as well. With zero, works. I mean, it's a bit hard to see, so... <laughs> Let's try with the single layers. Okay, it's like it's having a little bit of collision so it might not be really good so if I reduce to 30 looks good enough zero yeah 30 might be really good if I change the rod lengths oops now it at some value it just collapse maybe if you need uh, another middle <coughs> positions for the IK you might might be able to fix that maybe there is some flipping happening again somewhere if it makes zero no rotation happens if you make the rotation rod bigger the movement becomes bigger interesting all right and I think 1.8 is a good number for dynamic movement Alright, so everything looks good. And let's try to uh, have additional geometry and let's end this one in this tutorial, shall we? What I am going to do, um, since currently all the layers are look separated, so I'm just going to create a simple like connections between the layers just some horizontal line <clears throat> that's it but just to make it a bit more realistic okay so to do that mm, I am going to let's see I'm going to get all the core information the core geometries by using a split node or a delete node get the core okay so from this core geometry <coughs> I would like to create a line connecting from end to the start start to the end so let's try to do that to do that it might be a good idea to have some attribute to use it for the connection so after I have translated um, I could create another point wrangle to set some ID for each point I'm just gonna copy the point number to a ID attribute. Since each layer should have the same point number in this case, which means I can share the same ID over over the layers. And by doing it, you'll be able to get several points sharing the same ID for some points. So for this point, for this point and this point, this should all share the same ID. This point share the same ID and everything is as uh, well. So now I'm going to use the a add node to 
connect all those attributes based on the ID. All right, like this. And maybe I should have split it. I should split the core. And merge it with all the other. Okay, which might make it a bit more realistic, more like a structure. Now there is a lot of collisions, so if you wanna make it more realistic, you gotta, I guess you gotta fix those stuff by yourself. But <clears throat> for now, in terms of the geometry, looks fine. Now, um, since I have just created the skeleton shape, shall we try to set some geometry on top of it? I mean, the easiest way is to use this polygon itself. Uh, in this case, this one, which is currently a rig. And for those rigs, you can use a KinFX related component to <clears throat> deform the geometry, or as someone said in the comment, uh, use a packed based geometry without the deformation. Uh, I haven't tried the the other one, the, the non-deformation part might be suitable for this kind of mechanics. But I could what I could try is um, <clears throat> what was it? Deform bone deform. Probably I could do that, but I haven't tried it out uh, previously, so it might take some time to test it out with this one. So if you're interested, you can try it by yourself. For now, um, what I could do, I'm just gonna create like a wireframe on top of it. To create the simple <coughs> wireframe geometry. Right. If you want to change the color based on the layers, you can use... you can probably need to apply some additional ID or parameters. I mean the attributes. So I can... I can do it right here where I am referring to this meta node. Let's say file is equal to or layer layer is equal to the iteration itself okay and I'm going to use the color node <clears throat> I can set it to a RAM from attribute. Use the what was it? The layer. And the layer is in between the num zero to the number of iterations, which is this value right here. So I can copy that, paste it right here, and minus one. So by doing this, you can create your own gradational stuff or any color you want. This is too rainbowish. This might be interesting. So, as like that, just like that. Okay, yeah, um, so this is pretty much it. If you have any questions to these, please let me know. 
think I had one question previously. So, so from Money Val Nine, a bit lost on directing nodes on other areas in the Houdini session, meaning up all P input pass. If you get some time, you explain these for me, please. Like these. Okay. Hmm. I see. Well. Uh, let's see. Let's see how I can explain that. Uh, mm. Mm -mm. <coughs> mm. Let me check the detail attribute of this one. Nope, doesn't have any detail. Alright. This one, this one, this one. Nope. Let me just temporarily create some attribute. Create attribute, attribute create. I'm gonna create some detail attribute. And detail. And let's say this detail attribute has a frame value. Okay. This is just a test. Okay. Oh no, not this one. Sorry. Shouldn't go here. Uh, instead of attribute create, I'm going to create. I'm going to use the attribute wrangle because I want to create set the animated attribute to this one. So attribute wrangle. Let's do it without the wireframe. So for this one, let's say I have this detail attribute for frame uh, for float value called frame, and you can access the value called the time-based value. Okay, which is the uh, which is the second, which is calculated as second from the first frame. So in total, you have 10 seconds. So in the last, this time will become 10, I think. All right, now, uh, what I'm going to do now is to try to access to this detail attribute by, from a transform using an expression and to see how we can use these a uh, op input or so on <clears> okay <throat> the easiest way um, is to first of all you can see that from this attribute wrangle you can you already have this detail attribute so by knowing the name of the node you can use chf and here is the first input is the channel which is the path to the node so as you write in the comment you can say dot dot slash dot dot slash means you are looking at the current network meaning under the geometry network okay so you are looking for all the possible nodes under this network inside this network okay which uh, which uh, you will it will give you a list of possible node in this case what i want is this attribute wrangle one so i can just select this one and by setting like these you are you can refer to the node name if it's on the other geometry node say you are let me just test out with this one okay so this is currently at the same no, geometry network and I am referring to the first input and by doing it uh, doesn't really move does it it's not re really referring to okay uh, I shouldn't use the CHF I should use the detail 
sorry for that. So detail, what was the value? Frame zero. Okay. So, is it moving slowly? I guess it's, it's too slow. I want to make it faster, like ten. All right. Looks like it's working now. So what it's doing here, I'm just referring to the detail attribute which has been created right here. Which is easy to refer to because it it's at the same node network. So you can just say dot dot slash like this. Now if what if this value is at the same uh, at the different uh, network? How we do that? Let's say this is uh, the geometry 2. You have a single point which have this detail attribute. The same detail attribute which changed by time. Now how do we refer to that? I guess there are several ways you can do that. First of uh, first thing to, is to you can refer from the object node and go down to the geometry 2 to that point attribute to do that instead of using the dot dot you could use the obj uh, obj geo2 and attribute wrangle 1 and now you can get the same value. Now I'm not sure if I can do the other way around. Um, if I try to use the dot dot slash, currently this shows the original, I mean current network. Now if you have another dot dot slash, you are going upward. You're going to the parent network. Now you can refer to the geometry to <coughs> then go to the attribute wrangle one and you get the same result so this is more like a relative reference All right <clears throat> now let's make this go back to the geometry one now the final <clears throat> the other way in order to uh, find the path is the one that is in the comment is this op input um, op input or op input pass um, I wasn't sure I'm not sure what was the difference I often use this op input and that <coughs> is used uh, to define the input value, the, in, the input number of the node, which uh, informations you want to use. In this case, uh, the geometry node, this geometry node is, has this first input, only the one input right here. So you can, what you can do is to refer to this node and refer to the first input of this node and as a result you, you'll be able to get this detail value. So to use that, if you want to look for yourself, you have to type like this first starting with the dot dot slash which is which shows the current node network. Then oops gotta say dot dot slash so this is the current point, uh, origin uh, current network positions and then use the op input <coughs> just like written like this so dot means yourself and then zero get the same value now if you want to know more uh, informations about it I think you should look at the expression function page for Houdini for all PMP 
it. So, so let's see what's the difference between the OP input and OP input path. Returns the name of the node connected to the given input, returns the full path of the node. Ah, okay, so this one just gives you the name, this one gives you the whole path. So might be, OP input path might be suitable for this kind of purpose. Let's look at it. Okay, so in this case, probably I don't really need this dot dot slash, but I'll just say path. And that should just do the job. Alright, that was easy. So LP input pass is <coughs> um, referring to the the node, the input pass of the node. Okay. And does it have more information? Indexes that it obvious then to get the path of the node connected to the first input. Do, 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 do. So the name could be the name of the node. So if it's yourself, you can just say dot. But if it's the other node, you probably need to do the same things as you are doing, like dot dot slash and attribute wrangle and so on. Nope, no, actually not. What if I just say the attribute wrangle one as a name? Nope. Uh, I'm not sure how to refer the name. Probably for this one, I might need to use the OP input. Not sure. I haven't used. Re I haven't really used to get the pass. But if you if you just need the pass, then just need to instead of using this one, just use like these. That's much faster, I guess. All right, <clears throat> hope it makes sense. Now, I do like the working animation, so I'll just keep it somewhere, maybe somewhere around here. I'm just gonna move the X value based on the time. Point wrangle. Right. Yeah, looks like it's working, walking to the say uh, the, the correct direction. Nice. Now, if you want to know the exact like the correct walking distance, you gotta you might need to calculate that uh, geometrically. I'm not doing here. Alright, uh, so one thing I was missing is to create the loop animations. If you look from the, uh, the close to the starting from the close to the end frame, you can see that the animation is not really looping. So let's also fix that. And if you don't have any questions, anything, any questions, so I would like to end the tutorial here. So going back to the route, <coughs> mm, what was it? So what I need to uh, fix is this time-based value. Because I'm using the time, I cannot make it a loop animation, but instead by using a frame-based value, I can get the volume between 0 to 1, and then use that together with some, I don't know, trigonometry you'll be able to get the loop. So let's do that. I'm gonna fix this one and... No, not the trigonometry, but the multiplication of 360 degrees. So... First of all, I'm going to have a 360 degrees in radians, which is pi multiplied by 2. Then multiply by the frame divided by the frame end, which will give you a value in between 0 to 1. Let's make sure that this is a float. And then you also might want to uh, set how many loops you want in one 
frame range. So I'm gonna create it as a parameter, which is can be used as a speed. So st let's stop by 10, make it really fast. And now you can see that the loop is it is the animation is looping. Let's make it 60 frame. Loops too fast. Okay, it's looping cleanly. Looks good. All right, and working. Now, if it's working, then the looping doesn't really make sense. So it's just makes this stand on the positions make it with the wires and that's probably it so uh, how did you uh, wait a minute I think I have some problem here okay the first layer is okay but if I look at the second layer the angle is kind of offset it. You can see here, right here. Also the third layer. Yeah, there is a bit of problem here. Okay. Okay, I think I need to fix that one. First layer was okay. Second layer, it's not okay. So to fix that, I think I need to go back to this rotation rod and use somehow the layer based value which is this coming from this method 2 and this rotation rod it is a duration 2 value right here okay so where is that where should i fix that value okay wait a minute uh, why did I multiply it by iteration 2? Ah, oh, that's okay. Now, what if I multiply this by iteration 2? Okay, not, not working. Iteration 2 plus 1. Nope. Not really so uh, let me think how I should fix it okay um let's see okay so I have this <coughs> hmm let me make this as a other variable I'm gonna name it as add angle Currently, this is the initial angle right here. So, okay. Now to fix this one, okay, let me see. Hmm. Initial angle is 30 degrees right now. And if I multiply by mult, get it with the IT2. Okay, this is obviously wrong. Hmm. Let me think here. Okay, actually, this initial angle should be, ah, right, this is not really right. 
Okay, this uh, add angle should be changed based on the iteration um, one, I think. Iteration one, if iteration one is equal to uh, one, then Mm hmm. Hmm. That angle is zero. Starting from zero, and then make this at angle as a init ang. Okay, let me look at the each of the layers. Okay, so from the first layer, it doesn't look good. Doesn't look correct. Let's see. What if everything is zero? I'm gonna test out from zero. So currently, the, <clears throat> the angle between here should have a multiplication of two of this value right here. The, not this one, this 30. So 60 degrees for, but if I look at the other stuff, it's not, it's no more a 60 degrees. Okay, so, so first thing I want is to keep all the layers to have a 60 degrees offset for the left side and the right side. To do that, probably need to multiply malt to this one all right now i have 60 degrees offset for each one okay then i probably need to just replace this with init ang and that will fix everything yep yeah did so no need to do any complex conditions Okay, looks good. And it is looping. All right. <clears throat> okay, so I think everything is working now. So since I don't have any, I don't seem to have any questions. Um. I'm not sure if you find it useful for any. I mean, I find it really useful because I can now create this kind of a linking structures precisely. Um, precisely changing these shapes, like <clears throat> is uh, I think it's a have a great possibilities to it. I mean, I guess you could just if you just need to like simulate this kind of linking system there are much better software for it but the the best things about Houdini is that you can create geometries procedurally so combining with this procedural proceduralisms together with this uh, linking mechanism could open up some interesting structures that's what I thought all right <coughs> So I hope you thought that the same way. If not, sorry for that. <laughs> sorry for taking your time. Uh, but uh, I myself is pretty satisfied with this. All right, so uh, I am going to end the live stream. Um, I am later on going to upload 
the file that I've just created right here and so that you can download it to test it out yourself in your environment you have to have a Houdini 18.5 though and yeah and if you find these streaming helpful if you want to support me or anything uh, I also have the Patreon page so I'll be appreciated you can access to the file from the video description page of this video YouTube video as well as the page to the Patreon so <clears throat> um, if you find it useful uh, I will appreciate your support okay that's it thank you very much for watching and all the comments and thank you for all the suggestions I'll try to uh, I would love to dig into more of this KinFX related functions it looks really fascinating all right <clears throat> and that's it good night and see you next week I'm going to do the other tutorial live next week sometime around the same time okay good night good night good night good night